Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, my stepsister let our house get robbed. My family's lives got thrown into chaos three months ago when my mom got arrested for some financial-related crimes. She's probably going to be going away for the next three to eight years. We're losing our home, and her and my stepfather are getting divorced. There's no good timing for any of this, but it's especially bad right now because I'm in college on the other side of the country. My stepfather isn't even in the country right now. He's deployed. And my only sibling, my stepsister, Stacy, just turned 17. By the time my mom realized she couldn't even make bond, I only had three weeks until winter break. So we agreed that it would be okay for me to keep my original flight back while things were still being sorted out. We decided that I'm going to take a semester off of school to help out until everything is settled. Obviously, it wasn't ideal to have Stacy hold down the fort for that long, but it's not illegal. The bills were paid and everything, so all she had to do was breathe and not burn the house down. She did not do that. She decided that all of this meant that she could do whatever she wanted, and she moved in with her boyfriend without telling anyone. The house went unattended, and of course, we got robbed. They cleaned the place out. Anything of value that was left after the raid is gone, including basically all of my stuff. That's what I came home to. I immediately called Stacy, but she blocked my number. I only know where she went through social media and she wouldn't respond to my messages there. So I had to start posting about all of this on Facebook to get her to respond. And now I'm getting crap for blaming her and putting too much on her. I'm expecting too much? On top of having to drop out of school temporarily and everything else I'm responsible for, including probably ending up her guardian, I now have to replace anything I didn't take to college with me and immediately scramble for housing. My only expectation of her was to just not vanish for three weeks. That was the only responsibility and she bailed. Her being a minor makes her actions worse in my opinion because it's not even legal for her to decide that she just wants to live on her own now. She was legally required to stay there because our parents told her to. I don't think I'm required to pretend she was just an angel to talk about it. Edit. We have footage from a nearby security camera that proves that she wasn't involved in the robbery. Not the jerk whatsoever. Stacy is 17. She's basically an adult. You put your trust in her and she betrayed it. She's the one to blame. It is the highest degree of irresponsibility to be effectively house-sitting for someone and then abandon the house. And then on top of all of that, she just blocked your number because she knows she did the wrong thing. Also, as someone else said, are you sure that she didn't rob your house? That would explain why she blocked you. No jerks here. Neither of you should be having to deal with this and you aren't responsible for Stacy. Your stepdad may be deployed, but he's the one that needs to step up. Bad idea to defer a semester of college. You should be graduating ASAP and getting into work so you can help yourself and your family more. Stacy is almost an adult. If she wants to live with her boyfriend, maybe come to an agreement about that that benefits everyone. Can his mom be a responsible person in her life while you go back to college? Can stepdad be around a bit more? The robbing is not her fault. Crap happens. And no, you shouldn't be putting expectations on Stacy. Let the parents parent. Am I wrong for ending a 20-year marriage because I learned that my wife cheated on me while we were dating? My wife, 44 female, and I, 43 male, have been married for 20 years now. We started dating back in high school when I was a junior and she was a senior. We were long distance for her first two years of college while I was in high school and did one year at a community college. Then we went to college in the same city for a year and have lived together ever since. We got married the summer after I graduated college. Our marriage has been pretty great so far, but I initiated a divorce after I discovered that she was hooking up with multiple other guys for the two years that we were long distance. Just after Christmas, we got together with a few friends of hers from college to catch up, have dinner and hang out. We talked about a lot of stuff and my wife mentioned that we met in high school. Not that we dated, just that we met. Her old college roommate commented that it was crazy that we met in high school had a few wild years in college, then ended up together. I played along and commented that I didn't know if my wife was as crazy as I was. The roommate started to tell a story, but my wife cut her off and said she was uncomfortable with it. I sensed something was up, so I said that we actually started dating in high school and we were together for my wife's entire time at college. All of my wife's friends got real quiet and the rest of the dinner was awkward. On the way out, one of her other roommates took me aside and said I should have an honest conversation about what happened in college. I asked my wife on the way home and she kind of blew me off. 
I told her it was important that she was honest with me and again she said it wasn't important. When we got home, I told her I was going to stay at my brother's house until she was ready to talk about what happened in college. The next day she came over and admitted to hooking up with several other guys during her first two years at college. She said she didn't consider it a big deal at the time because we were long distance and she didn't think a high school romance would last. I pressed her for more details and she said it was at least 10 different guys including at least three guys she introduced me to as friends when I came to visit on the weekends and one guy she was still in contact with. I told her that I wanted a divorce and I would be starting the paperwork as soon as I could, which I did recently. Her family and most of my family are telling me I shouldn't throw away my marriage over a few mistakes. I've stood by my belief that cheating on me with multiple guys for years is unacceptable no matter when it happened and the fact that she continued to maintain relationships with these guys right in front of me was an unacceptable amount of disrespect. We have two kids, but they're 17 and 19, and I believe they will understand why I need to end the marriage. Am I wrong for leaving? I feel like I'm going crazy with the amount of people telling me to look over years of infidelity and decades of lies. I obviously can't answer every question, but I wanted to provide some detail for common questions. The reason I posted this is that my wife and a few friends have been saying it's common to hook up with other people when you're in a long-distance relationship and that I'm kind of the odd one out for not doing it. I felt like I was being gaslit, but I wanted an outside perspective. We live in a state with a waiting period to finalize a divorce, so I felt like it was a reasonable idea to get some insight before things are finalized. After these comments, I see a handful of folks saying it's normal to hook up with other people during a long-distance relationship, but it seems to be a significant minority. We saw each other a couple of weekends a month during the two-year college period. I lived about three hours away from her college, so it was long distance, but not like cross country. This was not a situation where we went months without seeing each other. The three guys I met while she was in college were meetings that happened during parties. The subject of me being a boyfriend didn't really come up, so I honestly don't know if these guys knew anything. The one guy we're still in contact with married a mutual friend from college. This is not some guy she secretly messages on the side, it's somebody we've talked to regularly for years. I've talked to him a few times since I've learned about my wife. He said he didn't know we were dating at the time and has since blocked my wife on social media. Some folks have asked how the roommates didn't realize at our wedding that the timelines just didn't work out. The main reason is that my wife and I had a very small ceremony with just close family in Texas, then went back to the East Coast to have a big party with friends. The typical reception and sharing details about how we met stuff didn't really happen, so her roommates didn't realize we started dating before college. It sounds like they thought we only dated for the year we were both in the same city, then moved in together. I was open to therapy or some kind of attempt to save the marriage, but her insistence that this whole thing is common and I'm the one who's out of line is just too much for me. The only time she showed any remorse or even offered to reconcile is when I started filling out the paperwork. In the last week, she's gone back to saying she's right and I'm overreacting. This is also why I'm feeling like I'm being gaslit. It seems obvious that this is a major issue, but I've got my wife and others telling me it's normal and I'm overreacting. I'm not getting a paternity test unless my kids want to get one. I don't have any doubts that they are biologically mine and no test will make them not my kids. I love them more than anything in the world and my wife's infidelity won't change that, even if one or both of them were not biologically mine. They've been my kids for 19 years and they will be my kids for the rest of my life. We were definitely exclusively dating at the time. First, dating culture was a lot different 20 years ago and exclusive was kind of the default for most people. Second, we had a long and difficult discussion before she left for college about continuing the relationship long distance. She specifically wanted to stay together and even joked about her dad coming after me if I started hooking up with other girls at my school. Finally, at my senior prom, she was not able to attend and was very upset when I proposed going with a platonic female friend of mine. As a result, I ended up skipping my prom and hanging out with her instead. While we never said the word exclusive, I think the above reasons, combined with the general relationship before she left, are enough to assume exclusivity. Based on some comments here, I followed up with the friend that said I should have an honest conversation. She told me that 10 guys would be on the low end and that her biggest concern was that there was apparently at least one pregnancy scare that I didn't know about. I honestly don't think that really changes much. It's less about the number for me and more about the fact that she seems incapable of recognizing why this was wrong or why I feel betrayed. Thank you for all your helpful responses, even those that disagree with me. I will still be open to therapy if she's willing, 
but I honestly feel like it would be more about us being successful co-parents and finding closure than saving our marriage. It would change a lot if I felt that she actually wanted to fix things. Throughout our conversation about it, she repeatedly dismissed my feelings and told me I was overreacting to totally normal behavior. She didn't show any regret or consideration for how it hurt me until she realized I was serious about divorce. Then she got defensive and angry. She didn't offer to fix things in any way until I started the paperwork and notified her that I had a lawyer. I think we can navigate being parents. Our kids are older and I've been putting away money for college and post high school for a long time. So a lot of the custody and monetary issues that come up shouldn't be a big problem. We're also both financially stable and we make good money. Update. First, let's talk about the things I learned about the situation in college. After talking to my wife in sessions and texting with two of her roommates, it's clear that her roommates knew something was up in college. They said they thought the situation was weird and likely involved cheating. My wife had told them that we both had some wild times in college and worked it out before we got married, so they never really brought it up. The roommate who pulled me aside recently was uncomfortable with the fact that my wife clearly didn't talk it through with me and wanted me to know. As far as being introduced to guys that she hooked up with, apparently that was not intended. For one of the guys, he ended up dating and then marrying one of our mutual friends from college. This is the guy she was in contact with. In the other situations, she initially blamed me in the counseling session, but now has agreed that it was bad. When I went to visit her, she planned to hang out in the room or just hang out together alone. But I wanted to go to a few parties because in high school and community college, I didn't really have parties to go to. She didn't expect me to meet the guys, but they were at the parties and she felt she didn't have a choice. I still think this is kind of crappy, but it's not as bad as her intentionally parading me in front of guys. Most of our discussion in therapy has been talking about why I think it's a big deal and she doesn't. She initially said that none of these guys were in relationships with her and it was mostly just a one-time thing or a friend with benefits. Since she didn't view them as romantic relationships, she didn't see the big deal. Her words, not mine. My opinion is that we never said that was okay and she actively prevented me from doing the same. After digging into this across two sessions, my wife talking to some friends she now agrees that it was a breach of our trust and relationship. This is the shared understanding that has helped us talk about this situation more honestly and helped us get from arguing to talking. This is why I'm optimistic about co-parenting. Now, here's why I'm 100% set on divorce. Two things came up that make me want to leave the marriage. First, about 10 years ago, she went through a really rough patch and we didn't hook up for about two years. She had expressed that our love life was becoming boring, so I tried to spice things up. Apparently, she had been hung up on some experiences that had happened when she was in college that she is not comfortable talking about and wanted me to try them. But when I did, it made her feel awkward and guilty that it made her think of the other guys that she had been with. The fact that she's saying these experiences were meaningless, but they're still impacting our marriage, tells me they meant more than she wants to say. Second, she admitted that she has been flirting with coworkers on business trips since lockdown ended. She says that she never hooked up with anybody but it got as far as going out on a date with one of her male coworkers. That was the absolute deal breaker for me. We've told our kids that we're getting a divorce. We told them it was due to some bad decisions that we made in college that we're having trouble moving past now. My 19 year old, who's in college, asked me if I cheated on my wife while she was away at college. My wife got a little shaken up, but admitted to the kids that she's the one who cheated. We have agreed to not share any details with the kids. I reinforce that both of us will be there for the kids and that we are in therapy to make sure we handle this in the best way for the family. I also told the kids that if they wanted to talk to either of us or a therapist about it, that I would fully support it. We've started talking to a mediator about how to proceed with a divorce and unless things change, we should be able to have an amicable divorce. We're both financially stable on our own, we have no major debts and our kids are older, so custody is not an issue. This has been a crappy couple of months for me, but I'm doing okay now. And I honestly am grateful that my last post blew up because it both validated some of my feelings but also motivated me to go to counseling with my wife. The fact that she never mentioned it and repeatedly shut down OP explicitly probing for info after the dinner as not important shows that she's lying through her teeth and does in fact know that what she did was wrong and it is a big deal. She's just lying to herself at this point. No one else is buying her crap. This guy is smart. He knows that he knows enough to pull the ripcord and that any additional knowledge will be something he can't move past, so he's moving on. I know I'm probably in the minority here, but to me, it's crazy to throw away a 20-year marriage over a youthful college infidelity. You have kids together. You've built a life together. You find out this information and she's suddenly not the same woman she was yesterday? 
I mean, I hate to break it to you, but she's not the woman she was in college either. That person has been gone for a long time. The confessions of flirting with other men on business trips, that's pretty bad, I admit. But she confessed it, which means she at least acknowledges it's a problem. Otherwise, she wouldn't have said anything. I mean, I don't know. It's his life and his marriage. He knows what's best. Just seems like a waste is all. Throwing out the baby with the bathwater over an ego wound. This might be the most brain-dead doormat take I've ever seen on a sub like this. <laughs> I want a free car, and my boyfriend and his family seem to think that I'll give it to him for free. I, 23 female, won a brand new compact car in a raffle I entered a few weeks ago at a trade show that I was at for work, which is awesome, but I already have an older car that I really like, and I just finished paying it off, so I can finally pay the cheaper liability-only insurance. My car still has a lot of life in it, it only has about 100,000 miles, and if I were to choose a brand new car, it would not be the one that I won. I did some research, and after taxes and shipping, I could make around 14 to 15k from selling the car. That money would be an incredible just start after graduating college. It would more than triple my savings. My boyfriend, 25 male, of a little over a year, has been without a car for a few months. He's been struggling a bit financially, so he hasn't gotten a new one yet, but he can walk to the grocery store. He gets a ride to work, and I drive anywhere else. It's worked out fine, and I really don't mind. He helps out with gas and driving. For background, he lives with friends. I live with my dad for free, so I'm able to save up money. I definitely see a future with him, but we aren't at the point where we've talked about moving in together yet. But we are very serious. I went to a gathering at his parents' house last night. His whole family has been wonderful and welcoming to me, and everyone congratulated me on winning the car. But everyone, including my boyfriend, seemed to think the logical and obvious step was to either give it to my boyfriend or give him my car and keep the new one. I don't plan to do either of these things. It would be different if we were married or living together and our money was mixed together, but it's not. We aren't at that point in the relationship yet. I don't want to give him what would essentially be $15,000 in cash. It doesn't make any sense. If I had won the money instead, there wouldn't be any talk of just giving it all to him. That car and the resulting money should be mine. It's not my responsibility to provide him with a free car, whether it be my $5,000 car that I really like or this brand new one. For the dinner at his family's house, I just stayed quiet because I was so shocked at their assumption and I didn't want to rip it away from him in front of his entire extended family. How do I break this to him and his family that this car and the money from it is not in any way his? Update. So the day after the family gathering, where everyone assumed I just let my boyfriend use the car for free, I had to drive into the city where I won the car to sign a bunch of paperwork and pay some fees. We both had the day off, so I texted my boyfriend and asked if he'd like to come along so we could walk around the city and go out to eat afterwards. He agreed and I picked him up. We hadn't talked about the night before at all. He asked general questions about what it was that I had to do today, and I explained that, and then I explained how the taxes on the car were still going to be several thousand dollars, but luckily I could cover them with my savings until I got the money for selling the car and hopefully it would come out to around 14 to 15K based on my brother's calculations. He was quiet for a minute and asked, You don't want to keep it? And I said no, that I was happy with the older, bigger car I currently have. It better suits our needs, and I can pay cheaper insurance on it because it's paid off. He said that he didn't realize the taxes would be so much. It was awkward in the car for a moment, and I finally just asked, Did your family think I'd give you the car to use? He said his mom told everyone right before I got there that, we, meaning boyfriend and I, won the car and that he'd finally have something to drive. He said that he didn't think I'd do that, but he assumed I'd want to keep the new car simply because it was new and that maybe I'd let him use my old car if he took over the insurance payments. But then he very quickly said that he did not realize the taxes would be more than a few hundred dollars. I guess his train of thought makes sense given what he assumed about the cost. He agreed that it made the most sense to sell the new car. I asked if he was going to explain that to his mother and he said that he would and that she views the two of us like a married couple already because she wants that so badly for him and has been heavily pressuring him to propose to me. That I did not know. Neither of us are at a point where we're even remotely ready for that. We're happy with where we are right now. He promised he'd talk to his mom and explain to his family and that he wouldn't let any of them think less of me. I was worried about that. So he waited patiently while I dealt with a company running the raffle. It ended up taking over three hours and then we had a nice time strolling around the city, and I treated us to a very nice dinner. Yet again, the mother is writing checks that the relationship can't pay. 
What's with these parents who design an entire life for their kids from wish fulfillment? The previous generation has wildly different expectations from what relationships are like because the world right now is fundamentally alien to them. A lot of that goes to the economy. It just costs more to reach the milestones that seem normal to them, like moving out, dating, marriage, having kids, etc. Not just that, but dating has fundamentally changed in a way our parents' generation will never understand. The internet, dating apps, and social media have all massively changed not only our expectations in a partner, but the way we approach finding them in the first place. We've now got so many options, we're a lot less likely to settle for someone who isn't right for us, which means we're going to take longer before settling down. And then she treated him to a nice dinner? It's no wonder the guy's mom already considers them married. It's because she already considers OP's bank account her baby's money. This guy lives with his friends. Does he pay his bills? Does he do his own laundry? I'm sensing hidden red flags. The boyfriend is a deadbeat who lives with friends, has no vehicle, and he and his family are just aching for someone to step in and take care of him. OP needs to ditch this deadbeat and move on. $800 car turns into $3,000 in tickets. From 2018 to 2022, I, 25 male, was a consistently broke pizza delivery guy. My common method for vehicles was to buy cars for around $1,000, do minor repairs, and then drive them for three to six months until they exploded. I'd make 10X on the car and would wash repeat. Did this probably seven or eight times over the years. The only time I ever got burned was buying a 98 Civic Coupe. I remember I was a little extra broke but needed a car for work that week and Civics and Corollas were slash are the easiest and cheapest for me to work on. I texted him and drove to Felony Flats in Portland, red flag one, and was greeted by a man with a gold grill, red flag two, who didn't speak much English, which wasn't helped by my poor Spanish. The car itself was pretty beat up cosmetically but ran perfectly so I gave him the $800 and headed to work. This is where the problems begin. The next day I head to the DOL to register the car only to realize that the title was voided due to the car being in a wreck so I wouldn't be able to register till I got the proper title. Annoying but I figured he made an innocent mistake. I call him and leave a message saying there's issues with the title and he doesn't respond. I call over 100 times over the next two weeks to get it figured out but he keeps ignoring me and at this point I figure I've been had. I move the car to the public street to deal with another day. One morning, I come out to find tickets for no registration and no insurance left on the car, $150 to $200 between the two, and a tow warning. At first, I was enraged until it dawned on me that the car wasn't in my name and those tickets weren't mine to deal with, so I made a plan. Every few days, the car would get reticketed and tagged for towing. I would come out, place the tickets on the driver's seat, move the car by a few feet, and erase the tow warnings. After two-ish months, I had racked up about $2,000 in tickets on this car, not in my name. One day, I get a frantic call from, guess who, the man who sold me the car, who also miraculously learned perfect English, telling me he was getting calls from this city and begging me to not let them tow it. I think at this point, he realized what I was doing and that he would get me the title that week and that the delay was because he and his wife were in a nasty divorce and she had the current title. I simply responded, what car? and hung up on him. As I was leaving my apartment, I saw the cops there getting ready to load it on the tow truck and decided to let it go in case the former owner came looking for it. Ultimately, I never got my $800 back, but he got $2,000 in tickets, $4,000 if they went 30 days unpaid, and a $1,000 tow bill. But if the story about his divorce was true, a super angry ex-wife, because the car was still in her name too. Can't put a price on that. I never heard from him or the city about the car, my only regret was not driving it to an empty parking lot and leaving it in a handicapped spot, but didn't want to risk being seen on cameras. Hope you enjoyed. I, 40 male, accidentally read a text from my partner, 39 female, and it is not great. I went to use my wife's phone to look up a recipe and after unlocking it, the messenger app was open and was about divorce. I shouldn't have violated her space. I wasn't trying to. My phone was dead and I was trying to make dinner. But still, I violated her space, especially as I scrolled. I get that. Please be gentle as I'm in a dark place right now. My relationship has been very strained lately and we had a big fight two nights ago where I needed some short-term reassurance in our marriage before making a huge career decision, but ended up going through an internal checklist of every insecurity I had in our relationship. It was awful of me to do that. 
Today I grabbed her phone while making dinner and saw she had texted a recently divorced coworker about a job offer that I received. The text I saw was, Wife's friend, you definitely don't want to move right now for custody reasons, but let's chat tomorrow at lunch. My wife, sounds good. I panicked when I saw custody, so I scrolled up and saw, My wife, OP got offered a job three states away, but we might be heading towards divorce. Not sure what to do career-wise. Her friend, yeah, I understand that, sadly. My wife, I hate that I'm in this situation. I've tried to avoid it for the past two years, but I think it's inevitable at this point. This friend came up in conversation an hour later as my wife was exploring career moves to mesh with mine and my wife denied wanting to talk to her about divorce at all. I don't know what to do now. Our relationship is coming out of a bad place, but we've made amazing progress and we're doing pretty good. A long way to go. I've never had my wife lie to me before, so this is earth shattering to me as much about the notion that she feels divorce might be inevitable. Does this mean we're headed for divorce or does that just mean that she feels helpless in the moment? We had just had a big fight for us and I'm working through mental health issues. Please help. Are you sure you've made progress or did she just stop fighting for it to be better? It's very common that when one partner gives up and is ready to end the relationship, the other partner thinks things are getting better because they're fighting less. Did you accept the job offer? Was that what the big fight was about? Expecting your wife to move three states over when your relationship is in a bad place is not helping. I'm not saying that this is your fault or you're to blame. I just wouldn't want to move three states away, have distance from my support system, and give up my own job, all for a relationship that's not in a good place. That's a scary place to be, and if things were already rocky, I can see that being the final nail in the coffin. Did you acknowledge that when you brought up potentially moving? Exactly. My ex-husband was telling people we had worked things out when we most definitely hadn't. However, I had checked out of the relationship and wasn't bringing the issues up. That's not the same as resolved, which he knew because I said, name one thing that has changed. Nothing. So, why would you think our relationship was okay? Am I the jerk for not telling my family I could cook and letting them embarrass themselves in front of my in-laws? Growing up as the youngest in the family, I, 27 female, was often treated like I was a little princess who couldn't do anything for myself, which was aided by the fact I was a very clumsy kid and some things took me a lot of practice and patience to get right. I was the butt of the joke and my family loved to tease me and crack jokes about the fact I couldn't boil water or that I was a disaster everywhere I went. They would always say I could never be trusted in a kitchen and would need to find a man who could cook and clean for me in the future. It was something I resented and it did make me feel self-conscious. I would try really hard to not mess up, but somehow I always seemed to. Moving out to attend college was the best thing I ever did. I met so many great people, including my husband, and I thrived in an environment where nobody was making fun of me. One of my friends was in culinary school and she taught me a lot of cooking skills that I could use in my day-to-day -day life. She was really patient and suggested that I might have something like dyspraxia. She recognized some of my difficulties as being similar to her brother's. Sure enough, I went to my doctor and she referred me to a specialist to help diagnose me. I have a milder form, which is why it was never brought to attention enough. I just looked like I was careless or clumsy as a kid. I didn't see or speak to my family a lot during this time. When I did, it was awkward. My husband, then boyfriend, would come with me sometimes and he was always so annoyed by the jokes they'd make about me. When we got married, we actually eloped while on vacation overseas with his family. It was amazing and made a much less stressful wedding. My family and my in-laws had seen each other once or twice before, but briefly. So when my family decided they wanted to come and see me and stay for a weekend in a hotel, we decided to host both families, and I cooked. But we didn't announce that until my parents had started making their little jokes and crediting only my husband for the food and the cleanliness of our home. My in-laws were aware of how my family acted, but they didn't realize how little they believed in me. My husband giddily informed my family, after they had really made jerks of themselves, that I had cooked the whole meal and that we shared those responsibilities. He said the same thing goes for the cleaning. My family were like, no she can't, but my in-laws said I was cooking almost as long as they knew me and I did a good job every time. My mother-in-law mentioned my diagnosis and my dad told her that they thought I was just trying to make excuses. My family was awkward and my in-laws left with a better understanding of my family and a nice dose of anger at them for how far they were going to humiliate me in front of them. My family was also upset with me for not explaining things better beforehand. Not the condition, but the fact that I do cook now and I could do it. 
They said I tried to humiliate them out of pettiness. Am I the jerk? Good for you. And goodness gracious, is this the first Reddit post I've seen where the in-laws are the good guys? Seriously, well done. And I know how much of a relief it can be to get that diagnosis and finally get the, oh wow, that explains so much moment. Not the jerk. And your in-laws and husband sound amazing. Your own family, not so much. I would hope they learned a lesson here, but I would suspect probably not. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.